Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update for Tuesday, February 8th. Um, I hope that y'all are all thawing. I'm sure a lot of people are tired of, of breaking ice and seeing a little bit of snow flurries and even more ice. Um, I know a lot of people have been at district livestock shows and it's been a little chilly underneath our show barns, but we're going to kick it off. I'm going to go ahead and let Vince do our update for Central and South Louisiana. Well, thank, thank you for everyone for having me. Uh, yeah, we're coming off the heels of our district uh, show in Southwest Louisiana down in Lake Charles. And uh, I'll tell you, there's no colder place on earth uh, than when you have a, uh, a southwest wind blowing and a north wind uh, kind of all coming together on a on one afternoon and through the day on Friday. And, and the Burton Coliseum born is about the coldest place on earth when, when all that happens. So uh, it was pretty, pretty cold with a high of 35 on Friday. And uh, most of the beef shows going on between Friday and Saturday. And um, I was glad to sit in my truck to take that hour and a half ride home in the heater, but it was, it was nice. Uh, we got down in the, in the mid twenties on, on Friday night and Saturday night, both. So, um, you know, the ryegrass situation, as we'll, we'll say, we started off pretty well. Uh, if we recap back the way we started back in November, uh, we grazed grass. I mean, but, you know, most producers are so, so apprehensive about putting out fertilizer uh, at these, you know, these thousand dollar urea prices. And um, uh, myself, like like many others, we just going to wait until we get a, a weather change and we get the best response we can out of any money that we spend. So I think that's the general consensus. Uh, we, we talk about the calf market uh, as we did two weeks ago, the cow market, uh, cow market, you know, those yielding cows, you know, in the 80s. So. Um, again, if there's some chewing at the feed bill, uh, you probably, you know, that you're considering marketing, it now is as good a time to do it as any. Um, you know, a few people have uh, committed to some pricing on some, uh, you know, some yearling calves that have kind of just been, you know, sitting and waiting on on, on that price uh, to, to come up. And, and we've, we're seeing that. And I'm sure Jason will cover that in detail in his segment. But uh, it's, it's sure making you feel good about if you're going to spend some money, there is a little little market for the calves. So um, hopefully that continues in, into the spring and uh, the board wants to favor that as well. So as we, we watch that daily, um, but in general, uh, lots of hay being fed, uh, lots of supplement, uh, you know, tubs or, or maybe it li- uh, any kind of liquid feed, uh, liquid feed guys are moving quite a bit of product at this time. Um, you know, it, it goes back to the fertilizer and ryegrass. So, uh, without a good response on any kind of fertilizer, fertilizer application, people are just not not going to do it right now. And even some cubes, you know, have been going out. But you know, some of those products on tight supply, as we're not a, a big area to feed cubes during the winter time. So a lot of the dealers don't pre-order those. So they'll order them uh, week to week as, as their shipments come in. And 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 some of those have run short. So. Um, here, you know, February the, the 8th, and uh, we, we needed to be March the 8th as quick as we can, you know, to get some warm, warmer weather. And, um, you know, before the, we started this, this discussion and, and uh, recording this, you know, we're talking about the drought monitor. And, uh, you know, for Central and South Louisiana, we're extremely dry. Talked to one of my fellow uh, friend cattlemen from down in, they, they run cattle down south of the Anacostal. And they also do, you know, they trap, they trappers and hunters and uh, the marshes are so dry right now. They can't even pattern their, you know, their targeted species for trapping because they just kind of dispersed everywhere. Um, so it's, it's extremely dry even in central and south Louisiana. I know um, North Louisiana is, is making a mark on, on the drought monitor, but uh, we haven't really got into it. But it's moderately dry here as far as the drought monitor is concerned. But it's, it's extremely dry when it, it considering that we haven't had a, any kind of major rainfall in, in, at all this winter, so to speak. So you can walk around with church shoes just about everywhere right now and not have to put on rubber boots with the exception to after we get one of these showers, it'll get a little tacky, you know, but uh, this time of the year, we're usually bogging tractors and, and, you know, feeding hay, bogging tractors and that kind of thing. And it's far from that right now. You can go anywhere you want to in a pickup truck and pastures right now. So, um, Hopefully we, we do get some rain here with the onset of spring and some and some grass growing, but cows are getting out and about. You can tell the clover starting to come out. You can uh, they're moving away from the haystacks a little bit, you know, going pick so that clover clovers are starting to come out. So hopefully we see more and more of that as we move forward. And, you know, hopefully the price sticks together and, and uh, says, you know, holds true to what some of the marketing factors or trends are, are saying that's going to happen. So 
that's about where we at right now. You know, people are kind of mid mid part of the uh, fall calving or breeding uh, for their fall calving season right now. Um, so people are going to start pulling bulls out here before long, you know, with anticipation of getting them ready and supplementing bulls to go in, you know, to getting ready, preparing for, uh, for that, that spring breeding season. So, um, lots of bull sales coming up and a lot of the major shows and some of the big sales at some of these shows are coming up and a lot of anticipate seeing a lot of people buying bulls here in the near future, those that need them. So, uh, it's kind of kind of a very questionable uh, scenario going into the spring with limited supply on some of the, the chemicals we use, not only in crops but in pastures too. It, uh, I'm hearing $120 Roundup right now per gallon. That's kind of kind of crazy. I talked to one uh, corn farmer that bought all his atrazine uh, for his corn crop and spent almost $200,000 in one slug just just buying atrazine because it's short. Um, so. Be interesting uh 2022 would be interesting for a different twist of uh you know why everything is so short you know from the supply chain backlog and what have you so uh, moving forward never never it's always interesting needless to say so that's about where, where we're at in the central part of the state thank you lee uh, what about well thank you all glad to be with you all today hope everybody's kind of staying warm uh, and that segues right into our weather report for Northwest Louisiana. And it's been, uh, like a deep freeze, uh, for us, I guess, if you were in Montana or North Dakota, they wouldn't, but, uh, for us, it's been extremely cold, uh, nighttime lows down into the twenties, highs in the fifties, uh, just the opposite of what you want to see on some ryegrass growth. Ryegrass looks like the surface of the moon for the most part. Um, I have noticed just a little bit of, of green up on some ryegrass, not any real growth, but some green up and some green up in clover. Uh, all the ingredients are there. We just need some warmer nighttime temperatures. Uh, it's been dry. We did have a little bit of uh, winter precipitation late last week as around Friday farther westerly you, westerly you go over on the Texas line in northwest Louisiana uh, saw some uh, what I would say would be maybe a dusting of snow sleet a little bit of freezing rain just enough to wouldn't I wouldn't even say cover the ground wasn't enough to make a snowman for sure uh, farther east you go it didn't receive much if anything just light snow flurries no ground cover uh, saw some schools shut down uh, due to uh, potential for ice on the road, some disruptions on the interstate systems in the Shreveport Bossier area, but really not much impact. You know, that uh, freeze event we had in between Christmas and New Year's was much bigger impact in my mind than what we had uh, then. Vince mentioned the drought monitor. We had several parishes, four parishes out of our um, northwest region that hit D3. On, on the drought uh, categories there, which uh, some over Jason's way have been in D3 for quite a while and uh, in, in eastern Louisiana, but this is the first time we've seen D3 introduced in our in our uh, corner of the world, so to speak. Did get some uh, much needed rainfall this last week in association with that cold front that came in. Uh, it, it was very much appreciated. Everybody was kind of glad to see that. Um, a lot of hay being fed. People are starting to worry a little bit about hay supplies. We know that better weather's coming. It's just when is it going to get here? Uh, forecast back into the 20s tonight. Uh, in fact, and I think that's going to be the last time that we're in the 20s, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, working outside late yesterday afternoon, quit whenever it was about sundown, looked at the clock and it was uh, on over into six o'clock. So these days are getting longer. We're picking up some daylight hours and that always makes a difference. We just need uh, some warmer nighttime temperatures and, and of course daytime temperatures as well to get some added ryegrass growth. Uh, a lot going on in the markets and I'm, I'm sure Jason's going to cover uh, quite a bit in his segment of this report. Uh, the way I, I've kind of coined it is there, there, there's uh, opposing forces pulling on this cattle market and the verdict's still out as to which is going to win. You know, 
uh, last news update I mentioned uh, uh, the National Cattle Inventory Report, and it was uh, uh, bullish to say the least. And and we saw quite a resurgence on some future prices and some cash prices on some cattle. Uh, you look at these market reports coming out of these local livestock auctions and and showing uh, pretty good results uh, across the board, pretty good demand. Um, the numbers are, are low as far as you look at these market reports that indicate how many uh, head of cattle these individual barns are handling, and, and they're low. Uh, most time when cattle numbers are low this time of the year, it's because it's too wet to get them out and get them to town, and that's not the case right now. So it kind of lends itself to to want lends it to wonder if uh, if this is uh, more of an indication on uh, on overall cattle numbers or or whether this is just people holding off to market these cattle uh, until we get some some uh, some better prices in the future. Um, these inputs are just just terrible, uh, Vince talking about that fellow with the atrazine um it's terrible you know we're seeing uh talk to a guy that was getting ready to order f uh plastic wrap uh, film wrap to wrap some haylage and looking at about a 30 dollar a roll increase over last year on the plus price of plastic wrap and that's buying in bulk he was still seeing that big of an increase and uh shortages all around on on just about everything so uh, you know, part, uh, wait time on parts for tractors. I've heard some folks moaning about taking three or four months to get parts in to fix some tractors. So uh, it, it's just about every segment of our economy, especially in agriculture, that we're seeing some of these shortages and so on and so forth. Uh, do want to mention a couple of things as I get close to wrapping up here. Uh, we've set the date on our uh, North Louisiana AI class. Uh, it's going to be here at the Hill Farm Research Station, April the 6th through the 8th. We're going to be getting those uh, registration forms and everything out. That's a little earlier than what we normally do it, but uh, but we're looking at a pretty good attendance. The seating in for that is very limited. We've got a, 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 a interest list going on right now. So uh, moral of the story is if you're interested in learning more about AI, you're in uh, wanting to get in an AI class quick, we've got one coming up quick in April the 6th through 8th. I uh, highly recommend you get get in touch with one of us and get put on the list, find out how to register because uh, it, it looks like it'll, it'll be filling up fairly quickly this time around. Uh, still doing some hay testing for some folks. I had a had a guy ask me the other day what time of year I recommend hay testing. and said whenever you got the hay to test, whenever we can get it tested. Uh, even though it's, we're kind of hopefully drawn to the conclusion of our hay feeding season here in the next couple of months, uh, this gentleman uh, uh, was just wanting to get an idea on what his hay crop values were. So don't let the time of the year kind of influence you on when you want to test that hay. If you got some you want to test, contact one of us. We'll get you all the needed information, get you in touch with who you need to on getting some hay, hay tested for quality. Um, Pesticide recertification season is upon us. Uh, whenever I talk to any group of people in in, in agriculture, cattle, or, or otherwise, I always uh, just offer that as a reminder to pull that license out of your wallet or out of the console on your truck. Take a look at it. Take a look at your recertification date and make sure that you get in one of those classes to get recertified. It's that time of year, just, just a reminder. And the final thing I'm going to offer up is a, a big congratulations because we had a uh, announcement come out this past week on our new state uh, beef specialist, and it's no, uh, none other than Dr. Ashley Edwards, who's on this news update right now with us. So uh, congratulations, Dr. Edwards, in her new role as a state beef specialist. Uh, she's done some really great work so far, and we're, we're looking forward to more great work. So Ashley, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, Lee. You're going to make me blush on the video. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn it over to Jason. I know Vince was talking about how cold his barn is, but I might argue that we were we were as cold or colder in Delhi last week. Um, how else is it looking over in the Northeast region? So we did get some uh, some much needed rainfall. Definitely not a drought breaker, but uh, 
inch and a half or so of rain uh, caught across northeast Louisiana. Um, after spending all week last week in the Dell High area, uh, there was a lot of folks that I got to visit with, uh, and everybody had the same message that they were working in spots and in fields that they normally don't even think about going into in January and February. Uh, so it is it is definitely dry. Uh, Ashley, if we could, let's put a link to the uh, Forest Disaster Program document through Farm Service Agency. The reason that we talk about these uh, these drought monitor reports is because they are directly tied to the uh, Forest Disaster Program through Farm Service Agency, and uh, we'll put a link to that document uh, that you can access and and see the details about that program. Um, and stay in contact with your local Farm Service Agency; um, they're the ones that administer that program. Uh, so stay stay close to them if you are in these areas that've got some deep through drought. And uh, the last thing I'll talk about before we get into the markets is uh, so everybody's talked about uh, supply chain. Uh, I think the uh, the resounding message and the message we need to drive home to everybody is is the normal time frame that we might use for ordering and purchasing um, materials, products for our upcoming hay season. Uh, you might want to get that on your mind a little bit earlier. Uh, wait until uh, uh, till the springtime or waiting until the late part of the springtime, early part of the summer to buy some of these materials is probably not going to be a wise thing this year. Uh, so go ahead and start doing your inventory, what you got, figure out what you need to order, and go ahead and start getting that on your mind. Moving into the markets, uh, the cattle inventory report that Lee referenced a while ago did come out on January the 31st. Uh, generally came in low pre-report expectations, but did confirm expectations of a declining cow herd and a calf crop as lee indicated it was a bullish report uh, so we'll see in just a minute uh, futures did respond positively to that with a, uh, a rally in our live and our feeder cattle markets uh, so just to summarize that report if you hadn't already seen it so all cattle and calves in the united states as of january 1 2022 um, total 91.9 .9 million head uh, two percent below 93.8 million head on January 1, 2021. Beef cows at 30.1 million head were down two percent from a year ago, and beef replacement heifers. So you know that we're always watching what beef replacement heifers are doing because that's a pretty good indicator of what our cow herd is doing in terms of uh, increasing or decreasing. Uh, so beef replacement heifers at 5.6 million head. Uh, we're down 3% from a year ago. Uh, so that's kind of just the, the gist of, the, of that uh, that cattle inventory report that came out on January the 31st. Uh, December trade data will be released this coming Wednesday, which will complete the 2021 data. Uh, so expectations is that beef exports will end the year about 18% higher. Um, the World Agricultural and Supply Demand uh, estimates uh, crop production will also be released this coming Wednesday. Uh, so there are no big changes expected in the U.S. report. Uh, but, y'all, we've got to continue to watch what's happening in South America, particularly in Brazil, uh, related to crop um, uh, crop numbers. Uh, if those are revised lower, uh, it could uh, could have an impact, impact on what uh, our export market looks like in terms of crops from the U.S., uh, uh, later this year. Uh, looking at slaughter, so totally uh, total federally inspected slaughter is estimated at 639,000 head for the week, uh, down 643,000 head from the previous week. Choice box beef cutout values ended the week at $284 a hundred, which is down $6.92, with a choice select spread of $4.94, which is down $3.97. From the previous week, as reported in the National Weekly Direct uh, Slaughter Cattle Negotiated Purchaser Purchases Report, uh, and this was on a confirmed 98,188 head uh, for the week in the Texas Panhandle. Live purchases traded mostly three dollars higher, at $140 a hundred for the week in Kansas. Live purchases ranged from 138 to 140. Uh, which was mostly three to four dollars higher uh, for the week in Nebraska. Live purchases ranged from 138 to one 
41, get my cursor out of the way where I can see, uh, which was mostly two to three dollars higher um, from uh, from the previous week of 138 to 140. For the week in the Western Corn Belt, live purchases traded mostly two to three dollars higher at 140. Uh, settlements uh, ended the week, so looking at the futures market. So settlements ended the week with uh, February futures trading up 45 cents at 142.05, April up 12 cents at 146.87, and June down 15 cents at 141.37. So if we look at um, how live cattle started the week and how they ended the week, we did end uh, with about two dollars. Um, more in the live cattle markets uh, than what we did open uh, on Monday, uh, so that was that uh, that increase in our in our live cattle, and we'll see the same some of the same numbers in just a minute in our feeder cattle report. Five to six hundred pound steers, medium and large ones and twos, so between one sixty six and one seventy three, uh, which is steady from the previous week. Uh, so as we start getting up into those 170s, 178, 180s, so we're finally getting to like some 2016 prices um, whenever we get up into those upper 170s and 180s. Oklahoma City has already seen some 180s on the, that class of cattle, so we're getting back to uh, what we saw in 2016. Uh, 800-pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold steady at 146. Uh, which was steady to six dollars higher than the previous week. Um, if you look at uh, uh, volumes, as Lee mentioned a while ago, volumes were pretty light on this class of cattle and the reports that I looked at. Um, but based on the reports and the numbers that we did have, we were about six, steady to six dollars higher than the previous week. And the uh, futures market settlements ended the week with March trading down 62 cents at 166.10. April down 37 at 171.42 and May down 27 at 175.35. And even though by the time Friday rolled around, we were uh, looking at a little bit of a um, a negative in the market. Uh, if you compare that to how the market opened on the previous or on the Monday of last week, uh, we still closed at a higher uh, a higher price on the week. Average yielding lean coal cows into the week steady at 62 cents a pound, which is steady with the previous week. Uh, I'll, uh, as Vince always mentions, you can get better prices than that on some high yielding cows. I mean, you'll see some some high yielding cows well under the 70 cents, uh, but uh, on those lean cows, uh, we're steady at about 62 cents a pound. Looking at our feed stuff, soybean meal is up $44 a ton at $463.50. Soybean hulls are steady at $170 a ton. Cottonseed meal is up $2.50 at $317.50 a ton. Whole cottonseed is steady at $305 a ton. Rice brand steady at $195 a ton. Uh, the 60% corn gluten feed is steady at $695 a ton. DDGs are up $7.50 at $212.50 a ton, and corn is down $0.06 cents a bushel at $6.51 a bushel. And Ashley, with that, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank you. Um, so to wrap us up, got quite a few events. I'm going to try to get through them. Um, I don't know if they'll be exactly in chronological order, but we're going to try. So um, today, February 8th at 10.30, we have our live webinar. Um, that's with Dr. David Lawman of uh, Oklahoma State University. He's going to be talking about hay feeding efficiency. I know I've mentioned it before, and as, as everyone said already today, um, you know, we're, we're looking at hay supplies, and we still got a little bit um, to try to make it through. So it's a timely topic, and then it's also, you know, of course, pertinent um, in upcoming years as well. So we hope that you can join us live for that again at 10.30. Um, if you go to lsuagcenter.com forward slash beef brunch, you'll be able to click on that link there and join us. Um, Lee mentioned our, our Hill Farm AI class. I will have that um, posted or th those dates posted. And then once we get that out, you'll be able to see it on social media and, and via email. And we'll get that out through all the channels. Um, that's probably the last one. So I'm not going in chronological order. Um, Jason, do you want to come back on and, and talk just a second about Northeast Master Cattlemen?
Yes, ma'am. Yes, so we, we are we still are on go. I've had a little bit of uh, interest. Uh, I have not been in the office because the district livestock shows. So I'm not sure what uh, uh, what kind of farm interest I've got in terms of applications already in, but we are still on go for starting the first Monday in March over at the Washita Parish Extension Office each Monday night, 6 to 9, and we'll go through May. Uh, so, yes, that is still on go at this time. Uh, we can put a link in the description for uh, a link to get to that registration form and the information about the class. Thank you. Um, I mentioned today's Beef Brunch webinar in March. Um, I want to go ahead and, and put it on your calendars for Tuesday, March 8th. Jason and Lee are going to be coming on. Um, they're going to be talking about marketing your calves. We've had a bunch of questions, a bunch of interests. Um, in that topic. And so again, Tuesday, March 8th, Jason and Lee will do our, our monthly webinar um, at 1030. The Acadiana Beef, uh, Beef Cattle Producers Field Day is Saturday, March 12th. Um, that'll be from 830 to 1 at the Iberia Research Station. We'll get more information out to you on that as, as it gets closer, but go ahead and, and mark your calendars for that. And then I believe the only other thing, um, so I'll link the, the FSA forage disaster program that um, Jason talked about earlier. If for some reason I've missed any links or anything um, in the podcast or video descriptions, just reach out to me and I'll make sure you get that information. So um, I think that that's it. We want to, you know, say stay warm. As Lee said, I think hopefully we're, we're done with the 20 degree nights. And when I looked at the weather earlier, it looks like we're going to hit some 60s. Um, fairly regularly so hopefully hopefully we stay warm there and um, wish all of our exhibitors uh, that are coming into the LSU State Livestock Show um, and any of those contests associated with the stock show we want to wish all of you good luck so we will be back with y'all again in just a couple of weeks